Morale, it's Incendio, the Turkish on the play, and the Burmese answering back. There goes the Valentina. Of course, the glue, as you do, take it out in the first man. Well, you know, you mentioned the early phase of the drafts, right? The Lapu, the Fermis. I was actually more impressed with the later stages of the draft by Falcon Lunox. up against Blacklist International. Yeah, how they set up that Lunox pick was absolutely masterful, phenomenal, right? They banned out. Well, first they picked up the Lapu. That's the first setup in their chess game, the big game, the big game picture. Joy was then banned out by Blacklist International. They went for two other bands here for Falcon, right? They went for the Benedetta and the Esmeralda in the second phase. And if you know Edward, he usually plays those four heroes or the Paquito or the Uranus. So Paquito, right now, quite off meta. Mm. Uranus becomes an, uh, just a solid answer for them. And the Boxia was just icing on the cake, right? It was the cherry on top and it worked really well because they wanted to pick this Lunox. They had it in mind. I saw their reactions right after the Boxia and the Uranus pick. They were celebrating. What made the whole thing impressive to me, and again, why I have such a focus on the first half, is because it takes a lot of vision. It takes yes. a lot of prediction as a coach to, again, just orchestrate this yeah. kind of response that, all right, we're going to pick a Mardis, and then wait, Zipex, now you strike, Lunox. And that's what impresses me. The fact that you're able to say, Paramus Lapu first, and then we go from there, especially the Natalia. So that's what the first phase looked like in game one uh, against Blacklist, the game prior to this, but here, now it looks like for Coach Paranoid and Co, they are thinking of something else. They take out the carry, which opened up still quite Joy. a bit. Yeah, Joy, Kaja. A lot of heroes are on the table indeed here, Leo and Mirko. So Falcon, again, they need to ask themselves. They've been in this position against Blacklist. They were the second pick. So last time it worked. So let's see here, Falcon. What is going to be the answer? So still cryo bans towards Joy, but that leaves out the hero of, like you said, Kaja. Mm. Kaja works here, honestly, right? We've seen Incendio Supremacy utilize this before, but honestly, looking at the previous games, Rosa has been one of the key factors as to how they were able to really control the game up against Falcon. There you go, you read my mind. It's the Eve, the Farsa. Me personally, I'm looking at the Eve, right? Gideon has mentioned that he personally likes the Farsa a bit better than the Eve, especially in this matchup. But for me, that utility for the Eve does it. Yeah, no, Eve is a battle mage, and the, that's the reason why she's more uh, in trend now as compared to Farsa. Because Farsa, you know when she's ready. You know when the Wings by Wings is up. You know when they're ready to engage. An Eve, you can count the RWM, but sometimes she'd still survive. So I like this here. Now, What's the response from Falcon? Oh, Lord, something tells me a Faramis is coming up. Oh, Lapu Lapu, you're right. Perhaps another Faramis here, but they're so good at that. They're taking Just their they time. Are. They're taking their time here because they know Faramis against Eve, not a good matchup for that Faramis. So Definitely they not, need yeah. to be careful here. That is why they just secure the Lapu Lapu, but they are taking their time. Perhaps they might secure Marksman first, but no. Yeah, wow. Marksman, Claude. The Claude pick comes in here with the Lapu, which is quite interesting for me, right? We haven't seen Claude. Well, we have seen Claude find success. Oheb was absolutely phenomenal on that hero earlier on, but hasn't seen a lot of success on other games, right? Especially Zipix. Looking at him, he usually likes these unconventional gold lanes and the Irithel. Irithel has fallen off since he has last played it. And for the Lunas, for the Herod, you need a bit more setup, right? So the Claude is a safer pick, but that just gives Incendio Supremacy more room to pick up these prio heroes, these flexible heroes, I should say, as well, like the Kaja and the Fredrin. You don't know where these guys are going to go just yet, and that is such a big question mark towards Falcon. I think with a team like Incendio, it's safer to say that the Kaja is going to be the roamer. Yep. And then you just coin flip, whether it's Alien on the Fredrin or uh, Tienzi going into the jungle. Exactly, and this is going to be the question for Falcon. Uh, before the second phase, I personally feel they need to secure a hero for the mid lane. They saw, they already see this, like, okay, Kaja. Question is, why isn't there, there isn't much Lilia in M4? You know, I actually was about to get to that too, right? I was expecting something like Lilia, just because of the amount of dive and the amount of damage output that Right now, Incendio Supremacy have built up for themselves. But the Farsa pick comes in. Yeah. It's 
pretty vulnerable to that kind of catch. And again, we mentioned this earlier, I personally prefer the Yi. Leo, you agree that utility that Yi provides? Such a big W. I mean, because of the Eve that's introduced now, I mean, one of the main boogie women, boogie alien things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in how you see it? Yeah, whatever the species of, uh, regardless. Uh, <laughs> it's all about range, right? Yeah. And now, as it is, Incendio Supremacy, despite coming from a developing region, have a solid draft. I'm, I'm loving what they've rocking here. Uh, again, at the lead, Coach Paranoid, they have here. Uh, the even long range, and then the Frederick and the Kaja long range. So there's a way to punish you either way. So I think what, what Falcon is doing here is, all right, we have to find the same way to do that. So we have the Claude in the lap up front, and then the Farsa for long. They need to ban out the Grok here, Falcon. They last time around, even though they didn't pick up the Claude, they banned out that Grok. And remember, Alien on that Grok stole Lord. You mentioned this earlier, Leo. So Falcon, I think they should be able to locate that Grok ban just for extra security for that Claude. But no, you're thinking the Grok, they're thinking the Amon. I'm thinking the Yuzong. Okay. You have a Farsa, you have a yeah. Claude, you have a solid back line that's pretty vulnerable up against someone that can really dive towards that back line. And the Yuzong, that's the answer towards this kind of composition, right? We've seen this many times before. Even up against Blacklist International, what gave them so many trouble, so much trouble was the Yuzong. And here, I do believe we are going to see that Grok ban coming in, not from Falcon, but from Incendio. Very interesting because they realize that Falcon will have the first pick and that they have yet to secure a roamer. Again, Grok can create problems. Why? Grok Farsa, very fast clear. And it equals to fast rotations. Falcon with the first pick. They are now taking their time here. It seems like they should be able to pick up. I, I personally feel I like a jungler first. I'm and thinking then Bene. Bene can work. As a, no, 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 no. As a jungler. Jungle Bene is neither here nor there, but she's still better as an XP laner. She's I able agree. to draw lines so much better. Oh, and yeah. again, this is, oh, this is so Blacklist versus Falcon. <laughs> yeah. Again, you give a Mardis to Ken, and he's going to start choking you as soon as he uh. finds a window. But, 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 but. Mm -hmm. There's a difference now. Incendio Supremacy has a Kaja. They have a way to stop the Mardis, which Blacklist didn't have. You're right. You're Regardless, right. because now, yeah, you can, you can weave through all the CC, but Divine Judgment, that's not CC, that's suppression. On top of that, the slows, utility coming in from the Eve, the poke also. There's just so much right now from Incendio Supremacy, and they're going to actually pick up the Clint, which is a solid wow. hero up against the Claude. This is going to be really hard for Zipix to play. The lane, right? The matchup here is definitely not in favor of them. And if they actually put this Fredrin in that XP lane, or if they pick up something like a Yu Zong, I think it's just okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah. They wanted some backline pressure. They wanted a backline threat. They didn't go for the Yu Zong. They instead opted that to put that Fredrin in the XP lane because it's a solid matchup against the Lapu. And they pick up the Haya. I like a hero, a Roma hero, Force out of Falcon here. They can't add another crowd control. Atlas sounds good here. It's gonna be an oh. AOE party. Claude plays hero. it. Exactly. And as well as Lapu Lapu. So Atlas just fits perfectly. The question is only the Hayabusa, right? So add either Atlas or Kufra, I would love to have. But it's gonna be a Atlas. Atlas. Ooh. Yeah. We called it. I called it. You did, man. You really did. That's on you. That mm. is on you. And if you're looking at it now, Falcon have built themselves up a full team fight comp. Yep. And in the team fights that they can't win, they can send uh, Yellow Flash to do some work in a dead lane. And then Ken will just farm up, farm up, farm up. That's on the losing side. If they're winning, they just repeat what they did against Blacklist. Just choke them out. Make sure that Tianzi don't get nothing. And then finish at about 14, 15. It, it's very possible. Falcon can just ride that momentum. Again, that's what we were talking about. Man, once again here, honestly, I think for Falcon, there's a huge emphasis on getting that mid control, right? That's how they were able to actually win up against Blacklist International, and that's what they're trying to do here with the Farsa and the Atlas. However, oh. Incendio, Kaja, and Yi, right. that's the same thing. It comes down to the skill matchup in the mid lane to control the map. I guess every, well, mid lane Kaja, Yi Kaja will look for level 4 and as well as that Atlas. So let's see. Let's jump to the Land of Dawn. Leo, take Going us. Going into uh, this Five first tiebreaker the of the evening. Who'd have thought we'd been here? Smash but we're all happy to be here Woo! as well. Ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment and Welcome for that upper bracket Norwegian. slot, it's Incendio Supremacy versus Falcon Esports. I'm expecting it to be guns blazing from the start. And right now...
not really that guns blazing just yet. Both junglers just starting pretty slow. You can already see some movement by Apex. And just as expected, this Kaja Yeev combination in mid lane just gets the wave so I mean, got, got it cleared so fast, super and fast. They really need to take advantage of that. I mean, Kaja, Hayabusa, you very aggressive early game, and that is what Justin and Naomi need to deflect. Let's see, though. Uh-oh, that's going to be Naomi with the perfect mash. Justin, though, flickering out. Both teams, again, they're still opting to play it safe. They're not overcommitting, not overextending just yet. There's a lot of risk at play here in the early stage. Oh, they're not done. That whole rotation up top, that false engagement by Incendio opened up the Little Wander for Falcon. And again, say what you will about uh, small objectives like that, but in the early game, it's these little inches that you eventually turn into meters, miles, light years ahead of your uh, position. And here's something to note. I I'm wondering, why is Alien rocking that Ooh. emblem? Huh. Hmm. Festival. Oh, wait. that's not festival. No, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah. The is that unbending, unbending will? will. Unbending will. Wow, he's actually like looking just to deal damage. I guess Take, soak in the damage and give it back it out. into. Attack. That's a very Frederick thing to do. <laughs> very Frederick, not Frederick. Hey, but Frederick. That's me. That that is wrong you. guy, bro. That's alien. <laughs> that's you. that's, that's alien. alien. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, again, just just something to note. And I mean, there are several flavors of Claude these days, but. Yeah, this is what you usually pick up now. Uh -huh. Like, you want to farm heroes. You want to, you know, chip away with the avarice. So that's not out of the ordinary. All right, you can see here already slow and, well, I guess slow build-up. But Cam is looking to grab space in this sort of will incendio react. Let's see. Oh, you can see the reset already here by Falcon. And that actually is going to be pretty good for Incendio as they are actually going to be able to use this time oh, about side. to look for more. Oh. Exactly. That gold lane is going to be the problem right now as Rosa pops in that real world inflation almost taking Naomi down but he finds the fatal links and that's going to be Apex 47 brought back. Flickers out, Yellow Flash jumps in, that's the damage oh. and the flicker. Goodness Ken me. Ken picks up the first blood and the Falcon get the turtle too. Oh no, they've begun! This is it early on, not even three minutes in and the Burmese Python has begun the choke. Look, <laughs> he's taking away purple. Oh, no, he didn't. Rosa stole it away. Oh, Rosa took it away. But save your breath. Hayabusa stole purple yeah. buff oh. of Falcon it earlier. So it was a trade. Touché. But then again, Rosa is denying it away. Now, three minutes in first blood for Falcon already. So as expected, right? Slow pace. But I do indeed predict expected more from Incendio. They have the Hayabusa. You have to use it. So far, I think they're doing what they can. But what Falcon is doing so well to quell that is put Apex off timing. But wait, they catch one! Oh, man. TMZ gets the shadow kill in time. Going to be trying to go oh. for the quad shadow. Gets out as Apex comes in with Divine Judgment. Bringing Naomi back and getting the kill over onto him. Ken now looking for a trade as he jumps in onto Rosa with a Decimate. Finds the kill. Looking for more as he runs all the way to the enemy jungle but will choose to back off. Oh, as I was just saying, right? That's how you stop a Kaja lineup. You take them off their timing. You stop them from the flicker divine judgment, and then you put them in a position wherein they have to doubt themselves, and slowly but surely, I think that's what Falcon's doing to Apex 47. It was Yeev traded for Atlas, so again, Falcon still lead, leading, took took the grafts into that. But now, 25 seconds to the next turtle, it seems like Falcon, they need to still be in control, but... Both teams look to rotate top side. It seems like we're about to see a clash. Oh, Tianzi gets caught out. Ken gets pulled. Wow, very aggressive, and that's the reason why Naomi's ready to follow it up, but they don't find anything. Naomi oh, flickers forward, the brings the fatal link over towards two members. Yellow Flash is trying to look for that one more kill. Stuns him up, but will not be able to find it. Falcon, Discipline Gaming, jumps back, goes for the turtle instead. Wise move. Discipline esports. I mean, it's so hard to become Incendio right now, given yeah. that Falcon has your number. I think they have a pulse on when exactly and where Apex 47 is going to be. And Kaj is so powerful right now as a hero in the metagame, but only if you're in control. I don't know how they can find a comeback now because they're, what, 2k ahead under five uh, minutes? And look, in mid, these kinds of trades, these are okay for Falcon. I think they're fine with Naomi being a casualty. With the mid turret though, I don't think so, oh. right? And they are gonna be able to get it there. Oh, that's a that's a good conversion. Yeah. Mm, again, caught out there. Falcon, they need 
to be aware of that, but Incendio, they are stepping on the gas spot side. Oh, no! Zipix, man! A greedy move by him, trying to save that turret, and Incendio, once again, are showing why they're here at the world stage. That macro, they never lean on just to one weapon. When one weapon fails, they lean on the other. You can see here already two tier ones down. Falcon, even though they are slightly ahead in economy, but it doesn't matter. Space, Incendio, they are in full effect, and it seems like Falcon, they need to find compensation. It's a struggle, but they need to be more proactive and mi find more effective fights. I'm liking this uh, unbending Will Fredrin. I mean, this matchup between him and the Lapu-Lapu, I think there's some advantage for the Fredrin just hunkering down, especially if your other lanes are proactive. And you see how Rosa's just going with sunshine here. They're just looking for kills. And again, they're remaining proactive despite being slightly behind. So this is a good sign for Incendio. It is, right? Uh -oh. Naomi again. Wow, what a read. He finds Apex 47, brings him back, and everything was just used up. Three ultimates. The Decimate, the Feather Airstrike with the Fatal Links. It does give Falcon a bit more space to play with now that they have that turret taken down. And there are no trades on the board just yet from Incendio. Seems like your Falcon, they are per perfectly timed execution, but top side needs to be careful here. Yellow Flash 2 on 1, no commitment just yet. Turtle is up, so Incendio, if they do not want to contest, they need to find compensation. Perhaps the answer is going to be in the mid side. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Incendio has accepted the fact that they're not Whoa. getting any, but look! Again, you can see here, Tianzi's gonna get, get caught. Alien oh! flickers forward, gets a taunt onto Zipix. But Zipix still able to find the escape. Justin gonna be caught by the Divine Judgment as Ken jumps in. Gets the Decimate down. Naomi caught low as Yellow Flash looks for that back line. Oh. Jumps on the Rosa. Naomi's still kiting away as Ken's gonna be caught in the 1v3. Zipix walking back. Alien's gonna be able to dish out that damage as Ken's gonna be knocked up. Still, Ken running for the hills. Lapu gonna be able to get that kill down below. And now, what does it look like? It's a two for two. But I do think it's in favor of Falcon. That's the jungler and the mid laner traded in for a roamer and the mid laner. Yep, so close though. If they killed Ken, would have been an amazing shutdown. That's four kills on the jungler. Gani, what's the items looking like? DHS Golden Staff secured by that quad. But take a look at Clint. His gold is not far behind. Endless battle, so there is true damage. And he is on his way to BOD. Looking good for the both of the gold laners. But what interests me is that Farsa, bro. Clock of Destiny, Lightning Truncheon is about to come, so it's gonna be very, very interesting to see. Oh, it's on. Alien, on. gonna be caught down as the Feather Airstrike comes through. Apex 47 with a massive, massive divine judgment, but Zipix BMI wow. has that BMI placed in the right position, doesn't get bursted down in time, and that's another very good trade by Falcon picking up the XP. I feel like they're waiting on Sunshine. That whole engagement in mid could have been disastrous for Falcon only if INC, only if Incendio Supremacy had Sunshine with the right items. You see how they were all just like at half health, maybe less, two or three members of Falcon? That's what they were waiting for. But now, well, this is big concealed play. Rosa gonna be caught here, doesn't have the flicker, doesn't have the purify. Oh. And that's it. The Purify is just up right now. And that's just super unfortunate by him or super well calculated by Falcon. What a timing, right? That <laughs> knowledge, that conceal instinct, the trust on your roamer. Falcon, very good quality. And now, perfect time as well. No Yeev. But take a look at the mid side. It's so scrappy. Yeah, and that's, I guess, um, the disadvantage of going for the Unbending Will, right, Leo? He's not as sustainable as usual yeah no i think that's why they need to burst down there's a reason why alien is so game and i think it's part it's part of conditioning there's a reason why he wants falcon to fight here because if they don't buy them uh, attention then it's all gonna crash down but wait we got eyes on naomi alien gonna be caught there but it's gonna be the divine judgment Ooh, bringing ken, ken over appraiser's wrath comes in but ken's gonna be able to find that as dnz jumps into the back line with a shadow kill getting the shutdown yellow flash is low naomi with the perfect oh match my god oh. praise tnz back in zipix jumps in with a blazing new end the feathered airstrike from behind to back him off finds another and falcon somehow some way are able to make it favorable to them this is a flicker clawed, mind you, and Zipix was just unstoppable there. Didn't even use it. Exactly, Incendio. It was it was looking good. Ken got got taken down, but let's take a look here. Let's see what happened. You can see here, Ken gets the kill, but perfectly timed. TNC jumps into the backside as well, but there you go. The stun fatal links connects, and where is where Rosa Apex 
got this man. Whoa. Lord. Yeah. Quick conversion. I mean, it's a clean Lord. What I saw in that team fight, in that instant replay, mm -hmm. was that they overloaded Sunshine. He has to make a choice, right? Agreed. Where do I flick my passive? Where do I throw my ult out? Is it towards Yellow Flash or towards everyone else? He made the call and he committed. He's way in too deep, bro. And he couldn't have <laughs> gone back. So that's what happened. It resulted in their offensive being split up. And that's why Falco just punished really hard. Just the damage dealers, right? Having a better opening, in my opinion, and a better follow-up technically right now because for Sunshine, in terms of mobility, he can't really match that of Claude, right? And here, for the items, Ghani, you can already see as well that the Clint still working on that BOD. Mm. Finally gonna get that power spike, but is it too late? Let's see though, because Mardis builds semi-hybrid, he builds that Hunter Strike, and the rest is just full defense. Why? He wants that movement speed from that Brute Force Breastplate, yeah. and as well as Hunter Strike, and he wants some extra penetration, adding some sauce. But take a look, Divine Judgment. Only onto Yellow Flash right now with a Shadow Kill too. That damage reduction from Bravest Fighter doing him justice. As Falcon just back off completely. Hey, Yellow Flash back to full HP. Oh. TNT with the Jukes though. You Gets see out. that? That's Bigger. all four shadows, but no! The timing, my goodness. <laughs> Naomi says, I'm into deep, bro. I already saw him earlier. We got to kill him. But they're not done. They are done, man. With just that kill, they're baiting out the real world in place. And Naomi's going to be caught there, but he is very low. Zipix, whoa. Very aggressive BMI. <laughs> almost getting caught himself. But they will just be happy with the trade over with two tier twos. What was that? Zipix trying to protect Naomi? He's like, take me. <laughs> take exactly, me instead, exactly. psych. Like, what, what, what happened? But again, Falcon here already expanding. Incendio, they are in in a bit of a big economy wise and as well as map wise but man falcon sharp as heck i agree right they are really looking sharp and this is what we expected this is what we were talking about before the match was the momentum of the game Ooh. gonna help them naomi seems like he is gonna help the team here getting up a kill ken picks it up like it's nothing they're using these ultimates Three ultimates for one member, you would think it's not efficient, but they're doing it so well and they're backing off after every single pickoff that it's always good. They're going for a beeline into small objectives or anything to just really take away everything mm -hmm. from Incendio. You saw there that kill on Apex turned into a orange steel buff. And now look, Ken is living inside of Incendio's base. Uh, rather, their side of the jungle. Soon enough, he'll live in his base because that's what the Burmese Python does, right? But <laughs> now, they're, they're just making uh, a play for this Lord. First Lord, it seems. Uh, rather, second Lord. I, I can't believe it. The first Lord just went by that fast. Yeah. The game has just been going at a pace where it's just a lot of team fights happening. Even when it's slow, it's fun. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, you just don't remember that, hey, it's been 13 minutes. You're right. I mean, let's give a shout out towards Naomi. 13 assists to his name, 13 total kill points, 100% KP currently. And again, Justin Farsa, he has no purify. He only gets picked up once. So amazing positioning, amazing conversion again. Falcon with a comfortable Lord pickup. Let's see, what can they do with this Lord push? I mean, there's no real CC in the side of uh, Incendio, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they really have just real world manipulation or Divine, Divine judgment. judgment. If you get hit with Alien's full kit, then that's on you. And I think Naomi has done an amazing job of checking where people are, right? Of making sure that Vision is on Falcon's side. But looking at the damage dealt, there, I st I'm still holding out hope. I think there's still something when it comes to um, those clutch Divine Judgments. If he finds the perfect target, Apex 47 has a lot to think about. They're marching down. Shadow Kill was popped in here by TNZ, clearing out the mid lane wave. It's now it's going to be that Enhanced Lord marching down that bottom lane. Going to be able to get the charge down onto the bottom side base turret. Yellow Flash and Naomi looking for the play right now. They got to be careful. Can't really commit here. One mistake can turn the tides with an 8,000 gold lead. Yellow Flash jumps up the Bravest Fighter. Still, just trying to zone Incendio away as Ken goes munching on that mid lane base turret. Justin with a Feather Airstrike Goodness. to zone them. And it's just clean by Falcon. Clinical gameplay. I mean, at this point, Justin with that Holy Crystal, that Feather Airstrike can deal a lot of damage towards Sunshine and especially towards Rosa. So again, even on defense, especially on defense, their positioning needs to be on point. Last base turret top side, Falcon here, they're in a very, very good spot. Yeah, that top lane is their last bastion. They're gonna do everything they can, but wait, they've come in. 
Yellow Flash again with that Bravest Spider, with Naomi joining in with a perfect match. Not gonna be able to find the stun though. Alien finds a taunt, almost gets Zipix, but Naomi jumps in with the Fatal Link to turn it around. Apex though turns it back around once again by finding Zipix. It's a two for one. Alien and Sunshine turn in for Zipix as that's gonna be TMZ jumping in, looking for that shadow kill, but he does not have it just yet. Falcon forced to back away, but they have taken two base turrets. Oh, I was, oh man, I thought TNZ was going to go for that. Yeah, no, signs of life here from Incendio yeah. Supremacy. Not so quick, not like that. And for the first time, TNZ is going to have a taste of his own buff. I mean, he missed out on the purple, mm -hmm. but yeah. now he's going to get the orange. Again, shades of that game between Falcon and Blacklist. I mean, Falcon, they occupied that base a little bit too long, forcing True. a little bit too much, and they got punished. Incendio, again, still behind on economy, but they have chances now. Can they make it work? That's the big question, right? And I think that was just brilliant by Incendio. They noticed that Falcon was overextending, was overcommitting. They went back and forth and got to give props to Rosa, man, because he was the one who actually was poking Falcon down, losing a whole lot of mana, but always going back and forth. Because, hey, they're in their base. They have unlimited resources. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of finding that box. Again, I think that's a sign uh, of, of, of what is to come once Sunshine gets his full build and once TNZ can get better positioning. Because earlier, earlier they got the, almost the perfect Divine Judgment, but TNZ came in maybe two or three seconds too late. But wait, look at this angle. What a read by Naomi. I thought it was going to be an incredible flank, but TNZ's going to be caught here. Jumps in. Uses the shadow kill to get out. Jumps out as well oh as Alien's gonna be caught here. He's trying to help him mip oh. her out. Justin almost gets slain, and that would have been worth it for Incendio. But Justin lives with a sliver of HP as Alien's not gonna be caught. Naomi does a great job at opening up the map, zoning Sunshine and Rosa away. And Falcon, they read Incendio like an open book. Three members left standing here, Leo, and wow. it seems like it is going to be a free lord. The base is too exposed behind an economy, and Sendio can they defend this? Yeah, they're going to have about 15 seconds until the lord spawns, so at least it'll be a five man defense. All right. And they can do it inside their base. But then again, yeah. This is just an uh, enhanced lord. It's not evolved yet. But look, they're already in! Naomi once again with the flicker and the retry! He helps his team. Ken was there instantly to follow it up. And now it's just Sunshine who gets picked off. Zipix jumps out in time. Oh. Tianzi with a fast hand. But it's still just them defending now. Falcon are waiting patiently for the Enhanced Lord to march in. Alien jumps in with a taunt. Ken's going to be caught there, but is going to be able to get out. Apex 47 jumping in only to die to the hands of Ken with a decimate. Alien now going to be bursted down. Doesn't have time to go for the Appraiser's Wrath as the Shadow Kill comes in. Ken losing GG. all immortality, but it's going to be GG here. Zipix flickering out, flickering back in. They end the game to claim their victory. Revenge towards Incendio. Ken's feeling it. Falcon Esports have done it. My goodness. Falcon with the momentum that they got from the win against Blacklist. They took it towards the Turkish team now. Falcon securing the extra point. But my goodness, what a game both teams have displayed. Congratulations. And Falcon again showing qualities that they are the real.